I spent an exorbitant amount of time yesterday on um, watching many streams in the background while I was working. I was listening to academics. I was listening to um, what's that thing called? Uh, Law and Crime, Crime and Law Channel. I was watching ABC. Just so much content was just getting flooded in my ears about what's happening. And I've got to be honest, I switched back mostly to academics because it was quite interesting to listen to somebody who had like a bit of an opposing view because we all know what Diddy done was obviously horrible. We know what Diddy done was fucking bad. We know he belongs under a jail. We know all that stuff, right? But there are some very skewed and warped people out there who have a very interesting and odd way that they're seeing things. And some people like academics and Wack 100 who was on the call with him when they were live stream had some very interesting opinions about the whole sex trafficking thing. I think Wack 100 specifically said something along the lines of like, he doesn't think Diddy is a sex trafficker. He just thinks he's super horny and he was flying people in and out to fuck, obviously. But obviously, in the process of doing that and flying them in and out over state lines, that obviously constitutes a sex trafficking. But he doesn't think it's as sinister as what the charges make it seem as. He just thinks it was somebody who got who was too horny and just got too excited with his horniness and didn't know how to kind of calm down and relax and shit. And obviously, Diddy, and obviously in, in academics point of view, he had a very um, unique point of view where he said he thinks a lot of the people involved were consenting. And now that Cassie has obviously, you know, been the one to kind of blow Diddy spot up and get a lot of money out of it, allegedly, that a lot of them are just queuing up for a paycheck. But there are some victims, but he says a lot of them are also consenting adults who were okay with doing it at the time. But now that culture and the atmosphere around him has kind of changed, they're now changing tact, which I think is again insane because you know you still can't f you still can't film people without them knowing you still can't spike their drinks so even if they did kind of agree but they changed their mind the fact that he spiked their drinks allegedly and the fact that he was filming them secretly allegedly is still obviously something that you would have to face the consequences for so regardless of that we're going to talk through a little bit of the case i'll go through the article here on bbc share with you some of my opinions and then we'll move on because i think i've exalted myself listening to it and I'm sure you have are probably tired about hearing about it, especially if you're a woman. I'm sure stuff like this is kind of triggering. And the way they are kind of talking about it is almost like they're lionizing Diddy in a way. It's almost like he's being kind of held up in the... I don't know. I'm not sure if he's been lying. I don't know. It's, it seems the coverage is odd. It doesn't seem as sinister as it should be. It should be more like R. Kelly, Epstein's foot coverage. But it doesn't seem that way. It feels a little bit strange. I don't know. Maybe I'm looking into it too much. Who knows? Let's read the article closer to the BBC. It says, Sean Diddy Combs denied bail in sex trafficking case. You have here an incredible sketch of him in court. Um, I think because it's a federal case, they're not allowed any cameras. So this is the only image that we're going to have of Diddy in the courthouse. Um, I think we're going to get probably a mugshot probably soon. That'll probably end up being an iconic thing. And some streetwear brand will end up probably selling it for like $100 on a t-shirt sometime soon. So let's scroll down. It says a New York federal judge remanded the musician in custody after prosecutors argued he was a serious flight risk. By the way, he stood no chance, didn't he? The judge in the case is a woman as well. Like, come on, bruh. You're not getting out on bail. Um, Mr. Cohen, 54, arrested on Monday evening, accused of running a criminal enterprise from at least 2008 that relied on drugs, violence to force women to fulfill his sexual desires, according to prosecutors. The funny thing is, well, to point out here, 2008, more than likely... I would imagine there's probably not enough witnesses willing to come forward pre-2008 to charge him for anything before that. So the only ones that they could get on record were the 2008 onwards. So that goes to show you just how many people out there this guy might have most likely had abused. Do you know what I mean? It's pretty wild. It continues. A 14-page indictment charges him with racketeering, sex trafficking by force, and transportation to engage in prostitution. If convicted on all three counts, a rapper and record producer faces a sentence of 15 years up to life in prison. 15 years up to life in prison. You know how insane that is? Just the other day, allegedly, I think according to academics, this guy was staying in a hotel in New York in a presidential suite that was somewhere around $10,000 per night. On that same day, he gets booked, gets denied bail, and now he's looking at life in prison. Honestly, bro, like, I remember reading a quote. I think I read a quote about it on Twitter. And I think this only happens when you're going through, like, a, a crisis of confidence. All these fucking motivational tweets pop up in your timeline. But I, I remember this tweet popped up in my timeline or something along the lines of, keep going, keep doing what you're doing. 
because eventually all the hard work will pay off and you'll have one moment that will make all those moments where no one saw you kind of matter, right? It's like, and that's kind of how life basically works, right? This, this is why people always say, oh, there's no such thing as overnight success. It's just, you didn't know about them and then they blow up and then suddenly they become the biggest thing, right? But it also works on the other end, right? It was also on the other end. You've spent all this time being this super famous, super successful person and then it also can go like that. Like instantly, one moment you're legitimately ordering fucking room service to your room, to your presidential suite that's probably bigger than my apartment and most people's homes. You're getting fucking caviar in your bed and shit. You're doing fucking bumps of 2C because allegedly you're still fucking doing pink cocaine in the hotel. I need some of that shit, <laughs> right? So he was still doing bags of cocaine on in this room, having the time of his life. And then bang, in a couple of hours, he's in prison. Like, it, it, like, life is fucking insane how that happens, man. It's absolutely wild. He was wearing a black T-shirt and gray sweatpants during a Tuesday court appearance in Manhattan. Asked by the U.S. magistrates, Judge Robin um, Tarnovsky, how he wished to plead, Mr. Combs stood up and said, not guilty. According to court documents, Mr. Combs wielded the power of his status to lure vict female victims to engage in extended sex acts called freak-offs. During freak-offs, Combs distributed a variety of controlled substances to victims in, in order to keep the victims obedient and compliant. Am I the only person that thinks that whole not guilty thing, and again, maybe I'm just being a little bit too idealistic and whatever. I don't, I'm not surprised when bad people do bad things. The only thing that surprises me is when bad people do bad things, get caught, and don't just hold their hands up. This guy had a good run of 30 plus years of absolute dominance and success and celebrity and shit. A lot, also during that time, he was abusing people. Abusing people. Properly abusing people. And he got away with it because of his fame, because of his celebrity, money, whatever. Surely, once you finally get caught, is there no, like, honor? Is there no, like, like, dignity this day long like not even pride is there no is there nothing in you that could just be like you know what i got away with some heinous crimes there's probably stuff i got away with that's not even on this fucking indictment guilty just to kind of expedite everything so no one because now he's pled not guilty he's got to go to trial and all these people that have been abused are going to have to be dragged through the court. They're going to have to fucking give their testimony, share their story. Their families are going to get destroyed online. You're going to have streamers and people online like myself dissecting their lives and questioning their motive. All this sort of shit is going to happen. Surely at some point, it's, you owe those people that you've abused to grace you just be like, you know what, guilty. And then take whatever sentence that comes your way. And maybe actually with a guilty plea, you might be able to negotiate something um, lesser for yourself instead of taking this trial and risking obviously getting life. I always wondered why that happens. Like, to, to the end, to the end, they're still pieces of shit. They're still scumbags. Anyway, it continues. During free cops, Combs distributed controlled substance to victims in part to keep the victims from being compliant. In a news briefing, U.S. prosecutor Damien Williams said officials had found firearms, ammunition, and more than 1,000 bottles of lubricant <laughs> during raids of Mr. Combs' homes in Miami, Los Angeles, about six months ago. Lubricant meaning baby oil. And because I've been on Twitter mostly, I'm not really using my Instagram too much, I'm mostly on Twitter, and most of the people that I follow on Twitter are gays and girls. And from what I know of following a lot of gay guys and girls on Twitter, they are very vocal about baby oil not being lubricant. I didn't know this. Honestly, I'm naive as fuck. I didn't know lub I didn't know baby oil wasn't lubricant. I remember back in the day, not me, I remember other people back in the day will sometimes use Vaseline. Not me, but other people. So I didn't know that baby oil wasn't lubricant and it could actually be harmful. So to hear he had 1,000 bottles of baby oil that he was using to bust nuts with? Yo, can you imagine when you're a fed, the things that you've seen as a federal police officer, FBI, whatever you are, coming into that house, all guns blazing, you burst into the fucking room, open one of the secret cabinets, and it's just a whole entire cabinet full of pink bottles of baby oil. Imagine your face as an officer, like, with your gun in your, like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, all these, like, you, you're kind of sickened because you know what that's for. You know he's not using that to moisturize himself. You know why I'm going for the fucking baby oil. And the really sick part of it as well, guess what they never found? They never found industrial-sized boxes of condoms. 
They never found industrial sized boxes of Plan B's. Just baby oil. Yeah, make of that what you will. It continues. Mr. Williams said federal agents had also found three semi automatic rifles with defaced serial numbers and a drum magazine. That obviously, I don't really think too much of it. If he's got AR 15s in his house, I get it. It's Diddy. You know, he's a high profile person. He's got loads of money. He's got a massive house. All this malarkey. Like, you know what I mean? LA, there's house robberies. I don't really have a problem with him having fucking, you know, semi automatic weapons with their serial numbers scratched off of it. That's like, that's hip hop shit. You know what I mean? That's hip hop. But it continues. He told reporters that further charges were possible without offering specific details. By the way, that's a scary thing for Diddy. The scary thing for Diddy, I know indictments are meant to be vague, but they're very, it's very vague. This indictment, I feel like, only covers what we know already from the Cassie thing, for the most part. That's what it covers. It, I think there's, 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 there's accounts about the Cassie um, hotel incident, that really unfortunate one, which you saw on video. And it's also an account that I think specifies what happened to Kid Cudi, where, did, where um, Diddy allegedly blew up his car because he found out that Cassie was um, seeing um, Kid Cudi when they were going for a break. So we haven't, there's probably more to come. They're probably, you know, holding their cars close to their chest. That's the scary thing if you're fucking, if you're Diddy, because there's other people probably coming out the woodwork or probably people that they're, you know, putting, you know, behind closed doors. And when they need them, they're going to pull them out and it's going to fucking kill everything. It continues. Mr. Combs' lawyer, Mark Aglif um, Agnifilio, said the defense team had already launched an appeal against the judge's bail decision. We believe in him wholeheartedly. He didn't do these things. There's no coercion, no crime. He's not afraid of the charges. Mr. Agnifilio said Mr. Combs is the target of an unjust prosecution. I'm not going to lie. The way Diddy's lawyer is coming at Cassie is an interesting tactic. But it makes sense. Because the Cassie allegations were the reason is the reason why we're here. That's the reason why Diddy's is currently in jail. Those Cassie, that Cassie lawsuit that he settled in under 24 hours is why we're here. So his lawyer is doing a good job by trying to discredit Cassie and trying to make Cassie seem like a money grabber. And he made a really interesting point that I didn't know. Like really weird point, really. I'm not sure how it's going to play out in court. But Diddy's lawyer is alleging that Cassie was writing a book or is still writing a book, a memoir. And she had called Diddy to say, hey, I'm writing this book, it's tell-all, it's going to expose all the shit you did to me. If you want the rights to it and you don't want it to come out, you have to pay me 30 million or something. And Diddy said no. And of course, the next day or whatever, she filed a lawsuit and everything blew up for Diddy. So the same thing, I guess she was, she was about to write a book, she put in a lawsuit. So I guess he's alleging that this wasn't to do with the, you know, how it was a crime, whatever. It was more to do with kind of extorting money out of Diddy. Now, me, I look at that and I think, Diddy's a fucking idiot because if he did do those things and this woman was offering him a way to get out of it, but, you know, pay a high penalty and no one would know about this shit or no one, you know, the public would know, he should have paid it. But I also got to show that his ego and his fucking hubris and whatever else is just so high that he didn't think this day would ever come. Because surely if that girl was offering you 30 mil to keep this, you know, undercovers and shit, I would have taken it. Especially if you're that much of a piece of shit and you're still continuing because they're also alleging, the prosecution's alleging, which is really fucking bad for Diddy, that he was still trying to intimidate witnesses till the day that he got locked up, bro. When that Dawn Richard woman filed her lawsuit from Dalenty Kane, who most of us believe if you're around and you know about Bad Boy, you know about Diddy and shit, you'll know that she was around also during that whole Cassie time as well. So her account is definitely real and we definitely believe everything she said. Um, Diddy allegedly called up one of her best friends in order to get to Dawn Richard and say, hey, tell, tell your girl to chill. Tell your girl to relax. And it's like, bro, you got away with this for 30 plus years. Surely at this point, you have to wave the white flag. Why are you still trying to, like, what are you doing? What are you doing? But again, it goes to show somebody of that kind of stature and status, they just probably think they're untouchable. And for a long time, he had every right to believe so because he did get away with some fucking heinous shit. And obviously, a lot of people in the industry also have a lot to blame to it. And by the way, did you notice? Did you notice the fucking crickets in the industry? All these people that fucking yap. All these fucking yappers that love to fucking share an opinion about first week sales, about Drake and Kendrick. Do you notice how silent some of these motherfuckers are? Honestly, man, the music industry is full of some evil people, bro. Evil people. The sooner you can get into the music industry and make your own... That's why I respect now even more so in a weird way, people like Frank Ocean, because you get to just do your thing. 
you don't participate in the whole like theatrics and the nonsense yes maybe your fans kind of pay the price because you're a bit of a cunt when you perform because you carry the attitude on stage and you feel like you don't owe people a good performance so you do what you do and you fucking fuck off but at least you don't have to get involved in all this seedy shit because i can only imagine how it must be like for a woman for a young lady coming into the music industry imagine what it must be like especially if you're mildly attractive oh oh my god Oh my god, no wonder Cha what do you mean? Chappelle Roan is so fucking moody and angry all the time. It's probably the music industry. It's fucking destroyed her. Continuing. In court documents, federal prosecutors said that Mr. Combs had abused, threatened, and coerced women and others around him to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. Prosecutors accused Mr. Combs of creating criminal enterprise whose members under his direction engage in sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, and bribery. On numerous occasions, the document said Mr. Combs assaulted women by striking, punching, dragging, throwing objects, and kicking them. You know what's funny as well? When is fucking young Miami going to get arrested? That's what I want to know. When is young Miami going to get arrested? Because she played. She was like, like, if he was Batman, she was his Robin for that last period of his time out in the sun doing his thing. So what, what happens to young Miami? Or is she going to flip? Is she going to do what we expect her to do? Is she going to throw Diddy under the bus and, and play like a damsel in distress when she was the one that was fucking threatening other girls with violence and shit on behalf of Diddy? I wonder what happened to young Miami. What happens to Carisha? Does she get arrested too? Let's continue. Um, the, the indictment did not specify how many women were allegedly victims. It also does not co accuse Mr. Combs himself of engaging directly in unwanted sexual acts with women. The Bible Records founder, who also founded, um, who also known during his career as P. Diddy and Puff Daddy, has faced many accusations before. Last blah, 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 blah. so the other thing that's really the other thing that's really sad about the situation is this. So before the, before the hearing for the bail shit happened, it obviously got denied. Diddy's lawyers had put together a proposed package to the judge. She'd be like, hey, these are this is what we're going to fucking um offer as collateral to guarantee this guy gets out on bail. Right? Of course, the Diddy doesn't want to spend any day in jail. I think everyone says jail. I think most people, from what I've listened to on documentaries and shit online, especially in America, people always say jail is far worse than prison. I think in the UK, we don't really have jail, we have prison. You go from like a holding cell and then you basically go to prison. You don't really go to jail. But in, in America, allegedly, the jails are far worse than prisons. So everyone wants that. No one wants to stay there. Everyone wants to go out and bail. So the, his lawyers prepared this package, right? And you know what's really fucking sad about this? The package that they prepared includes his mother's house as collateral. And it also includes the passports of all his kids. Do you know how fucking crazy that is? That you would do all the scumbag shit that Diddy has done all over the years. Then when it gets to the point where you're finally getting your feet held to the fire. You're finally paying for your crimes. You then have to fucking, in a way, use your kids as collateral. As like human meat shields. As like props to show that you're a good guy. Look, I'm a family man. My kids, my mom, they need me. And now you're forfeiting your kids' passports. Their ability to travel. Their ability to get away from this situation. And they have to now sit and basically they're going through the court case and the whole trial with him at the same time, basically. They're, they're basically paying for his crimes, essentially, when they've had nothing to do with it. You would imagine, especially the girls, maybe the boys, who knows? But God almighty, man, this is when this is when, you know, you're dealing with a pure scumbag, a pure scumbag. Mother's home, you're, the, the, the kids' passports, you're like, fucking hell, Diddy, bro. Diddy, 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 diddy. But again, are we surprised, really? Are we surprised? I am kinda, I'm not gonna lie, a little bit, a little bit surprised by it. Um, I, just, I don't know, I just thought at this time, because it felt like he was winding down. He was going, what well, he, he was going in New York, innit, right? Diddy was like seen in New York, right? Diddy, let's see. Diddy seen in New York. He was hanging around, he was walking around New York and shit, so most likely he knew this day was coming i just assumed because he was doing all these things he was popping out he was going to the beach with ray j he was just living his life right i just assumed more than likely that meant that he was going to accept the consequences of his crimes look at him look at him there with eric adams look at him there with mayor eric adams bro two fucking crooks look at him he got the he got the keys to the city last year you know <laughs> he got given the keys to new york city last year and this year, he's being fucking arrested on these fucking crazy crimes in New York, too. So, yeah, I just assumed because of all these, like, walks he was doing, 
that more than likely he would just like give it up and be like, you know what? I did a madness, yeah? I did a madness. It's over for me. Let's fucking go. But instead, now he's fighting tooth and nail. He's obviously putting his kids up as collateral, essentially. And now everyone's having to pay the price for his crimes. Pretty fucking insane. I'm not going to lie. Pretty insane. But again, should we be surprised? Should we be surprised? Obviously, obviously not. There's a video of him, obviously, out there in New York having a blast, as you can see. Can you see that? Diddy in New York having a blast. Sitting down, chilling. God damn, bro. Looking or turning around, acting a bit guilty and paranoid a bit. He's what was it? I think is it Washington Washington Square Park, isn't it? I think. Or one of those parks. Just having a good time, chilling. Doing like New Yorkers do. Fuck it now. Fuck it now. Anyway, we'll see how it plays out. We'll see how it plays out. We'll see how it plays out.